whether it's coring a slow API or running intensive tasks in a for loop, async programming is essential to your programming journey. And don't worry, we'll be learning everything from scratch. We'll learn what the difference between synchronous and asynchronous programming is, how to implement it in Python, and we'll take it a step further and see how to request to an API asynchronously. So here we'll first demonstrate synchronous programming by first just importing time, creating a start time and end time variable, just to see how long the code takes to run. And then we'll just start um, by adding a simple for loop into the code and writing time.sleep to imitate a query to a database or API and run this 10 times. Now, if you skip ahead, we can see that it takes 10 seconds to load. And this is because each time the for loop runs, it waits one second and then does it 10 times. So now we're going to attempt to do it in asynchronous code. So here we'll import asyncio and create a function called slowfunk. Now here you'll see two things interesting, the async and await keywords and asyncio.sleep. Now the async keyword essentially makes it so our function is asynchronous and the await keyword is special because what it allows our code to do is that instead of waiting for um, it to sleep for one second, it moves on to the next code and the asyncio.sleep function has that capability. Now next, what we're gonna do is create an if statement and essentially what this if statement does is it checks for if an event loop is running. And if event, event loop is not running, then we just create a new one and set it to asyncio. And if it is running already, then what we just do is we just create an else statement and we just uh, get the current event loop that is running. I know I rushed over the event loop concept and we'll talk about that more in a moment, but now we need to call our slow funk function. And so what we do is we just call it uh, using a for in range loop in a list comprehension. And essentially what this returns is something called a quarantine. And a quarantine is essentially like a promise in JavaScript. It essentially is an object that um, is an asynchronous function and we need to run that until it's done. So what we do is we do loop.run until complete and we write async.getter, um, the coros as short for quarantines, and we just spread it out and we call all of them. Now what happens is that if you run it, you see that it all happened in one second because it ran all at the same time. Getting back to what an event loop is, it is a fundamental concept in asynchronous programming and even languages such as Node.js have it constantly running in the background. Unlike Node.js, in Python, we have to manually get the event loop. That's why we use the if statement to check if it's running. If it wasn't running, we would set a new one. And if it was running, we would just get the current event loop. So now let's talk about the actual event loop. So say we query 10 asynchronous functions. When they're put in the event loop, they're not run synchronously one after another. Instead, what happens is that for each one of them, we register a callback and it starts the intensive operation. In this case, it's just sleeping for one second. And whenever the function is done, it notifies the event loop that the operation is complete and it triggers a callback to our code. Now, when we're using the asyncio.gather, essentially what's happening there is that it's waiting for all 10 asynchronous functions to finish before it returns a response. So what it does is that the event loop essentially waits for all 10 of them to trigger their callback. And when it does, we just respond back to our code with the final response. To finish, we'll finally do async request with Python using AIO HTTP, which you can install using pip install AIO HTTP. In here, we'll clear a client session using it, and then we'll create a example delay of five seconds. And here we'll pass it to this URL, which essentially creates a slow API imitation, and we'll do an async request using it. And we'll print out the request.status, and we'll finally run this. So now what we're doing is we're running 10 requests all at once that each take five seconds. And because we're doing this together, you'll notice that when it loads, it takes about five seconds to run 10 requests. This has been asynchronous programming in under five minutes and comment down below what you'd like to see next and see you in the next one.